Welcome back students. This class is going to be focused on droppers and hoppers and the transportation of items. So let's get started. So we start here in the lab for our first unit today, which is unit 5.3, item sorters and storage silos. First we'll start with the item sorter because you have to get the items to the silo for it to do anything. So. In the back here, we have this transparent design using glass. Problem is, it does not work because glass glass cannot be hard powered nor soft powered. Now, we have this comparator taking a measurement out of this hopper, which usually has 41 of the item that you want to sort and four other blocks renamed. And these are overflow protection to prevent it from breaking itself. Talk about that in a minute. So we have three rest in dust, and when this goes above 41, this third one will activate. Activating this repeater, which then deactivates the torch, unlocking the two hoppers. The overflow protection, when you have these next to each other, it really matters because if you just have one, overflow protection doesn't do any good. But when you have multiple together, it does because if you have more than a stack of this here, the fourth one will start turning on, and then a fifth one, and then as it gets fuller and fuller, it will be activating or unlocking more hoppers, draining these. So then these will start breaking, and then it just all becomes a huge mess. And it's something you don't want to deal with, trust me. So let's show it in action. So we have 23, 23 of each, and these lamps tell you when something's going in. So. Let's take a few stacks of this stuff, and let's put a few wood in there. Some, let's just do this. There we go. And you can tell cobble is going in there right now because that lamp is on. And if we were to look, we can tell that this is filling up and draining at the same time. After you sort the items, you have to store them, and that's where our storage silos come into play. So we have two designs. We have this design, which is chest on one side, hoppers on another, and then we have this design with chest and hoppers alternating, like that. The difference between the two is that, well, this one's more neat and usually more compact, and you can also take a reading from the hoppers, but it comes at a cost. If you were to take a lot of cobble from here, it wouldn't, you know, take cobble out of this chest to fill it back up. It would only take cobble out of the hoppers to fill this up. So if you take more than half of this, it's not going to fill all the way up. So you have to have access to all these chests. Because items up here are never going to end up down here. No matter how hard you try. Unless you just do this. But even then, that takes work. And that's where this one comes into play. This one, if you take stuff out of here, it'll go through all these containers back into this one. So, everything in here will eventually end up in here. But it comes at a cost. It's not as neat, and it's much harder to take a reading from than that one. Hoppers prioritize pushing items downwards instead of across. So items will come down until they reach a hopper that's full and then they will go into the chest, like this one. Because that one's just go in here, split up. And for this one, well, it just alternates between chest and hopper. Let's check our sorter system. We put two stacks of wood, two stacks of cobble, and one stack of dirt. Let's see what it did. So two stacks of oak, great, two stacks of cobble, awesome, and our one stack of dirt. Works like a charm. Since this is a resin school, we have to have hidden passageways using redstone. So what do you think in this room will lead us to our next class? I don't know this? No. How about this? 
And there you go. This is an example of a flush piston door. And this is how you can use it. Secret passageway. So, let's turn around and see what we're going to be learning next in unit 5.5. .5. Alright, now we're here in the outdoor lab. No trespassing, no food or drink, no animals. Keep that in mind. One sec. There we go. In regulation. Alright. So first, we're going to talk about how we can transport items horizontally. So, we have a water stream and a hopper chain. Which one do you think is faster? I'll give you a hint. It's not the hopper chain. So, right here, we have one of these auto dropper circuit, which what that does is when there's items in a dropper, it will take an output from the dropper, and then it will strengthen that output through a repeater, which then runs back into the dropper. And it also runs into a repeater, which runs into the comparator, turning it off because of the way a comparator works. And when it turns it off, it will deactivate that repeater and then it will loop around again because then the comparator will turn back on. So for water streams, first you use the cheapest way. Just any old block and an ice at every point where the water ends. Because water doesn't go on forever, as we know. It goes on for eight blocks and it stops. But in order to keep it going, we have to stop this water from coming back. So that's what this pressure plate is for. And the sign. Both can be used to do that. But you have to have a piece of ice because else the item will get stuck. So, this is the slowest method but the cheapest. Now, this method is pretty fast. And I'd say if I were you in a survival world, you would use this, not the blue ice. Because the blue ice is only marginally faster, but it costs so much extra. So. Let's activate it. So as you can tell, the rest of the blocks are flowing pretty fast through there. And they're entering this hopper to take it to whatever else you need. So let me turn this off. So the speeds of each. First, this version is uh, the ice between each water stream. and it takes 14 seconds for an item to travel 100 meters. And remember, one block is a meter. All ice, on average, is usually 100 meters in 10 seconds. So now, we have the hopper chain. Much slower. But, it doesn't require much room. Because this does require some room. But this is very expensive. Because, trust me, hoppers are expensive. Now, we have a bunch of redstone here. And if we flick this lever, it'll take its good old sweet time traveling through 2.5, there we go, traveling through 2.5 hoppers a second, and then it finally reached this. Now this is extremely reliable because it's hard for an item to get stuck, unless the hopper is powered by something. So you got to keep that in mind. Now we move on to moving things vertically. So you can go up and down. Now down is very simple, because all you have to do is have the item fall into a hopper. Pretty simple. But going up, uh, a bit more bit trickier. So first we have another auto dropper right here. And then we have this bubble elevator. Now we know that a bubble elevator has a block of soil sand and water source blocks all the way up. And a water source block, in order to make that, what you do is you put a bucket of water up there and then you place kelp all the way up because it does not work in flowing water which there's a difference between the two. Flowing water you cannot pick up with a bucket and a water source block you can't pick up with a bucket. That's how you know the difference. And this thing will work too. Now it also works without the soul sand block but it takes much longer because items take forever to float. So, Items are flowing up, and then they come down. Now, that might be a bug up there, but that's just a visual bug. They're coming down. So, let me deactivate this. Now, there's another way you can do this, which is a dropper elevator, which sometimes reliable, other times not. 
but I think this design is pretty reliable. Now, for this, we have a bunch of observers. We have a huge observer chain, which we'll talk more about those in a future episode. But what we're doing is all these observers are updating, and they're updating these, which are powering these blocks, powering these droppers. So this dropper will be powered, sending the block, the item up one, and it repeats until it goes to the top. So let me update. There we go. And it's very reliable and usually quiet, unless there's an item caught somewhere in it. So that's how you transport items. All right, now we move on to our last thing, which is the lock and key system. So, say we have this door here, we don't want anyone in because it's protecting something. Or it's like a secret meeting room. So we have this dropper here, and you have your own key, which is a bunch of wording, a signed book, and then we put that in, press that button, and then it opens for us. And then we can press this to close it and have access to our single diamond. We're rich. All right, so now after we've admired our single diamond, press this button, and then we leave, and then we press this button, and then take our key back, and then leave like we were never there. Now let's say there's a sneaky guy that's like, haha, I got this fake key, and they'll never know the difference. Put this in, and oh, nothing happens. All right, let's see if we can damage the system. Put potato in it. Nope. All right. I guess that doesn't work. And there's a good reason for that. Because this uses the same sort of mechanics that the item sorter does. All these are a copy of this book. So they can stack on each other. Which is what activates this T flip flop. Opening and closing the door. But let's say we don't want to use books. So instead of using books, you can use just any old item renamed. So what you do is you put these four items in these slots here and then you put the rest of them into here. Then you wait until enough drain out that this redstone line gets unpowered. And that will be when this is 18. So take all your keys, extra spare keys, and you can either get rid of them, put them somewhere safe. So like, let's just put some in here. And then, now you can use this key, and it works perfectly, just like the way with the book. And just like with the book, can't put a potato in and break it or work it. It'll still work afterwards. The thing about these lock and key systems is that they are extremely hard to crack because well for one you have to have the right item and this is just items we're not including books so you have to have the right item then rename it the right way so if that's not enough for you you can have a book and you can scramble in as much text as you want and you just copy it a few times and no one will be the wiser and that's what's great about these lock and key systems is they are super secure but before you yell at me in the comments, yes, of course, you can just do that or just break the entire thing if you want to get my single diamond. Now for extra credit, what I want you to do is take the stuff that you've learned today and build something yourself. So in order to demonstrate something that you could build, here we have a sort of system that involves this hopper, or no, the dropper elevator. So, what I do is I can put items into here. It sends the items up into the water stream and it sorts it. Now, I have not talked about this. So, you can send items through a water stream instead of hoppers. And in order to do this, you have to have some block like a chest or a honey block that is not a full block because the item will flow through here, hit this, and then it will, it will 
be on both the hopper and the ice at the same time. So it will travel really fast and get picked up when it reaches the correct hopper. So in order to demonstrate that, I'll throw a piece of redstone dust in. Hopefully this will work. There. So, let's put it into the machine. But first, redstone components only. You have been warned. Okay. So here's what it will sort. Let's put all this in here. Note that we have two observers and one block redstone. And let's also put our diamonds in here. So, we let this run, and if we want to, we can go look at that again. So yeah, as you can see, the dropper elevator is shooting the items up and out. They hit the chest, and then they start flowing, and then they go into the hopper they're supposed to. Now you saw a repeater. There you go. The only problem with the system is if you send too many items at a time, which is pretty easy because these aren't hoppers, is some of these hoppers can overflow and then it'll miss it and go and get lost somewhere in the system. What? Oh. That's right, rest in components only. Man, why do all my contraptions have to backfire somehow? I mean, come on. Why did I not put something for diamonds? Oh, that's another one. That's another one. That. Oh my gosh. Uh oh. Well, I saved my three diamonds. So, I hope that you build something similar to this. And it can be silly, it can be useless, but as long as you understand the rest of the components and the way they work together in these systems, you'll go a long ways. I hope you learned a lot today in class. We really covered a lot about droppers and hoppers today. So, if you want to get better, always practice. Because the more you practice, the more you understand this. And the more you understand this, the bigger and better contraptions you can make and impress your friends. Look out for next episode, and class is dismissed. <laughs>